So his speech is entitled, Could It Get Any Worse? Yes. Yes, it could. Please welcome Rick to the podium. Bang! I'm driving up. I'm all by myself in my $64.56 Peugeot French sports car. The engine's dead. I coast into this one pump gas station, Southern Oregon, very lonely. And how keen is my recollection of this? Keen enough to know, to remember that it was a $64 Peugeot. I didn't pay 60, I didn't pay 65, I paid 64. I don't remember why, but I paid 64. Boom! Coast right in through the grace of God. There's one garage, one kid, and a gas station, <laughs> probably a few miles from a town. What had happened? What happened? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. I blew a spark plug, but not just blew a spark plug. I blew a spark plug. It shot right out of the engine block. No problem. I had four. I had four cylinders, so now I had three cylinders to spare. So he said, "I was shocked. You're not going to believe this." This guy did not have the parts in stock for my $64.1956 Peugeot. Imagine that. So come back in a week or two. I jump on a bus. When I say jump, waited hours for the only bus to come into town. Went back to Washington, waited a couple weeks. And he says, come get your car. Jump on a bus four hours down from up near Tacoma back to this little gas station in Southern Oregon. When I got there, he neglected to mention one little thing. He could not find parts for my 1956 Peugeot, and in fact, hadn't touched it. 64 <laughs> bucks, I might have just left it there, right? But he probably knew that and didn't want me to abandon that car, so I said, well, it's, he said it's still drivable, so I said, well, three hours, so it's gonna be a long drive. Little did I know. So I, okay, I'll, uh, I'll just take it the way it is. My first problem, as I pulled it, Back out of the garage to get in. Have you heard a car without a muffler? Well, forget whatever that sounded like. This had an open hole on the cylinder that I could not put a rag in because it would catch fire and probably explode. <laughs> so how loud was it? A cylinder fires at least three times per second. Each cylinder was equivalent to a shotgun. <laughs> okay. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Time. I said, okay, okay, this will be an unpleasant ride, but I'll, 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 somehow, I'll somehow manage. So I get in my $64.56 Peugeot, just like the one you see in your picture there, and I head out. And it is loud. So what's my first obstacle I encounter? Within a mile, probably five miles, where the guy at the gas station could still hear the car, I'm sure. <laughs> Of course, I had a pounding headache. I mean, I never got migraines, but this was approaching. I mean, bam, 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 bam. <sighs> All right, I'll survive. But then I get, begin to wonder, now I'm not gonna drive for, well, I was thinking three hours, but the speed of this car was about 15 miles an hour. And that was if I was going downhill, okay? <laughs> going uphill, I was gonna be lucky if I didn't have to get out and push this thing. So anyway, it was going to be a long, long, very slow, very loud drive. And I thought, what am I going to do when a cop pulls me over and, and says they're complaining about me disturbing the peace in Portland 100 miles away? <laughs> I'll just give you a heads up. A cop never pulled me over. So it was a wonderful trip, right? <laughs> Keep listening. I'm driving along, and it's loud, and it's loud. And within, I'd say, 20 miles or less, I, I start feeling a little woozy. Now being 1971, which for me is really the 60s, I sort of was familiar with woozy and almost hallucinations, which I was too familiar with. And I'm going, what's going on? I'm going, this isn't good, you know? Then it, then it dawned on me. If, if this was trivia pursuit, I was about to score a point. The hole in the cylinder was open. And, and it wasn't firing, so gas fumes were coming out the hole, through the firewall, into my nose, which was just this far south of a migraine headache. And now I'm hallucinating. Well, no problem. I rolled it down because 1956 Peugeots don't have what? Electric windows. Of course they don't. So, no problem. Oh, fresh.
fresh air. Oh, okay, okay, there wasn't a pink elephant on the side of the road. That's good to know, that's good to know. So I breathe throughout, and I get back, and I come back in, and then I, I go for a while, and I go for a while, and it was like, and I breathe through a while, and I go, oh man, am I out of my mind? This is gonna be a long, long drive. So I, I drive, and it's in Southern Oregon, and I've never been on the course to Southern Oregon. Debbie will verify this, will we? I stuck my head out, and guess what? <laughs> it was sprinkling. Oh, okay, I've been through worse. I've been through worse than sprinkling with driving with my head out and gasoline fumes and shotgun blasts three times per second. I'll get over it, okay. So I'm driving along, it's a little rain, I'll get over it, it's fine. And what? Why am I getting out of my car and running back? My windshield wiper fell off. Okay, no problem, this is an old car, it's a 50 cent. So I put it on, but the little knobby thing is gone. Oh, uh, it still works. Oh, wait, wait. Okay. It still works, it still works. And okay, the window's still down. Take a breathe. Oh man, this thing is not going very fast. But it's just, uh, it's just, it's just sprinkling, right? It's just sprinkling, no problem. It's, uh, it's only two miles later. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. I put it on. Okay. Okay. Oh, I only got what? Uh, four hours to go? Sure, no problem. Okay, no problem. No problem. It falls off again. Okay, <laughs> this is not going to work. This is not going to work. What am I going to do? My car was empty. I had nothing in my car except a drink. Hmm. Why, thank you. <laughs> and so I looked at my car. I just bought the $64 car that didn't come with anything. Imagine that. I didn't have my bags. In. I found one thing in the entire car, a coat hanger. Okay, I get into my Peugeot, crank the sunroof, not electric, it's a crank, right? And I figure out how to hook it onto the top of my windshield wiper. No kidding. To the top of my windshield wiper. I did this. I bent it. It was hard because I don't think I had pliers. So I was using hands and, 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 the, and the grace of God. Attach it to the top of the windshield wiper. Guess what I did? Bent it, bent it, and it came down through the sunroof. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> and you know what? It's working, it's working. You know, you still gotta breathe, and of course, it's raining, and it's raining. Okay, it's okay. All right, it's working. So. About a half hour later, I arrived to my last huge obstacle to overcome. What is it? It's a large over ramp, an overpass. It's probably close to two miles long. That go, bypasses the city of Portland, Oregon, right? And it just goes over it. It's two lanes. It's like a freeway, right? And but it's a. I know that it's got two lanes. People are going to be screaming, yelling, and stuff. So I, it stops raining. So. I go, I go for it, and I'm going 15, and just everybody's passing with their one finger salute, and it didn't start <laughs> raining again. It was a deluge now. It turned into a deluge. Noah, think Noah in the ark. But a better <laughs> metaphor for me would be Titanic, actually. I thought, I'm not going to survive. And finally, I mean, it's just, I couldn't do this quick enough. I couldn't do it quick enough. Off on the side of the road, there was a there was a flat area and a barely a pullout, and there's about 10 inches of water. I sat there, and I go, oh, at least I'm, I look in my rear, and right there, two seconds behind, is a semi, 18-wheeler, that goes right by me. Sunroof open, window open. When I say it was a six-foot wave that splashed over my, I don't mean splash. I grew up surfing, body surfing, belly boarding every <laughs> summer for three years. When I say six-foot wave, I know what a six-foot wave is. Oh, it engulfed. It was a wave that was bigger than I would be comfortable riding. So I was soaked to the bone thinking, nobody's going to believe this story. Nobody. Maybe I'll wait till I'm 10 or 20 years old, 40, 34. You know what I do? I think I'll do. I'm going to wait until I'm for 50 years and I'm 71. I'll join Toastmasters and tell the story there. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>